Westmoreland Castle, which is a popular place for family outings, just outside Stoke-on-Trent. Look at that. Look at them lovely fields. They're great. Steve Johnson was a kindly, unassuming young man. He was devoted to his family and would turn his hand to all kinds of odd jobs in order to earn money for them, especially with Christmas coming up. Have you ever been this high up before? Come on, Steve, let's go. He and his wife Kathleen had two small daughters. This is Maucop Castle, a beauty spot a few miles north of Stoke. It was just a short distance from here that Steve Johnson was murdered. Can you pick up at 125 Cornville Road for me? Steve was training to be an insurance salesman during the day and worked nights as a taxi driver in Stoke. Hi, she, you all right, Doug? Hi, Steve, yes, Doug, are you? Yeah, fine. Uh, what car am I in tonight, love? You're in Bravo 5, it's in the yard, Doug. OK, see you later then. All right, Tra Steve, try, Doug. Steve was a very likeable man. All the staff got on with him well. He didn't come in until about nine o'clock in the evening. And when he came in, he'd always say to you, Look, I've just put the two girls to bed. Um, and he always seemed as if he did that before he come to work at night times. The cab looked like many of the taxis in Stoke, except that only seven cabs in the city have this distinctive red and black logo on the doors. Passengers may also remember the tiny portable TV he often took with him. With just four days to go now before Christmas, Friday the 21st of December was a busy night for the taxi trade. Steve was working solidly all evening. By two in the morning, he'd picked up more than 20 fares. His last identified fare was at around three in the morning when he drove this young woman home in the Longton area of Stoke. A dance club called Shelley's is near there. Shelley's is packed tonight. Yeah. He may have picked up a passenger on his way back past Shelley's, but by around 3.15 a.m. he was heading in towards Hanley in the city centre. What's Hanley like? No cars, no people. About five minutes after that, he radioed in to say he'd picked up another fare. Bravo 5, she. Bravo 5, Steve. How many to back more? Roger. Roger. Sometime before four in the morning, two villagers in Packmore were woken by what seemed to be an argument on the corner of Lordshire Place. No one knows whether this man returned to the cab or whether there was another passenger in the taxi as it drove off in the direction of Mao Cop. A resident in Mao Cop remembers hearing a car in the early hours labouring up the hill on Castle Road. The taxi office had expected Steve back within half an hour. Bravo 5, Steve. Bravo 5, Steve. As time passed with no sign of Steve, the company sent another driver out to look for him. Five, Steve, if you can hear me, give me a ring. Steve's taxi was discovered at daybreak. All the night's takings and the mini TV set were still inside. Steve's throat had been cut, but he'd managed to stagger a few yards down the farm lane. The spot where he died is now marked by flowers. 
Well, Mr. Ravenscroft, nothing would